Hey cuties, it's your girl Tana Too Cute. Come on y'all, let's get into this latest episode of Sisters, episode 13, titled, Who Can I Run To? And it says, Andy is presented with an offer to help take Gary low down once and for all. <laughs> and Danny and Fatima can't seem to keep Karen's big news to themselves. Come on y'all, let's talk about it. I feel good. Wait a minute. Who I knew are that you? I would know. Okay, so the episode started out, of course, where they left off last episode. Gary, Andy, and Jordan at the police station. Y'all, Gary beat them to the police station. Ironically, he was in the police station in full character, crying, you know, that his uh, wife is missing. His fiance is missing. I mean, crying. Apparently, Gary has know someone at the police station. So, you know, the officer was, you know, listening, taking his statement. And Andy and Jordan just looking like this some BS. I know he isn't, you know, in here pretending like he is, you know, low that Penelope is missing. So Gary tells the officer that the last person that she was in contact with based on what he saw in her phone is Andy. So he is now trying to turn it on Andy. And that's going to have Jordan, you know, we're going to see in the upcoming episode, maybe Jordan going to be looking side eye at Andy about this situation. So I thought that was crazy. But while they were at the police station, um, there was an FBI agent there that wanted to talk to Andy um, alone. So Andy told Jordan, hey, go ahead and leave. Go home, don't do anything dumb, and wait for me there. So he left. He We thought he left. He didn't leave. He went to watch so that he can eventually follow Gary and Hudson, Gary's assistant. But Andy went into the office with the FBI um, person, and of course, he they want Andy to help them take Gary down, to take Gary down. So they're saying they have the resources that she needs to help find Penelope, but they need her to testify against Gary um, for all the illegal activities that he is involved with. So and of course, tells them she will consider it. Meanwhile, she her and Fatima, you know, they catching up on a lot of the details. But Fatima was telling her. You know, that's what the FBI does. They wave something in front of you that you need to get something from you. So, and when you're providing them something, they're going to end up using that against you. So think long and hard about the decision you make in helping the FBI. Because if someone is missing, to me, if someone is missing, I mean, they can't turn down, um, helping to find a person now can they provide more resources than the normal or the average yeah but we'll see how this is going to unfold all right moving back to andy and fatima so fatima comes into andy's office and they're catching up on catching up with everything that went down at Karen's, right? So Fatima, you know, she didn't really want to tell Andy, but she really did want to tell Andy. So she shared the information. And Andy wasn't really, you know, in tune with what Fatima was saying. So, you know, she, Fatima said that she, this was a rare situation and she gave it a name, y'all. So, I'm going to attempt at the name Super Freaking Candation. (laughs) So then Andy shared with her, Fatima, that Gary was at the police station before they got there and how silly of a clown he was acting. Um, And she also shared about the FBI uh, agent wanting wanting her to work with them to bring down Gary. And Fatima, this is when Fatima told her, you know, you might think long and hard about working with them because they could use that against you. And Andy seemed to, you know, be clueless as to 
Can it really happen? Like, Andy, you're an attorney. You should know some of the basics of FBI investigations, right? Y'all tell me, should she know some of the basic FBI investigations? So we'll just see how that pretty much unfolds with that situation. Will she work with them or not? Then moving on to Fatima and Zach. And of course, Fatima had already done the research around, you know, finding out the official name for this rare situation of Karen having two baby daddies um, at the same time. Zach was telling Fatima that he wanted to talk to Karen about, you know, setting up a trust for his half of the baby and baby Michael, of course, like his half of the baby. You know, she got she's you have twins. Right. And he does have a responsibility to his baby. But Fatima was, you know, trying to get him to understand that that's not how that's going to roll. You're going to have to raise help with both of those babies. And I want to know your what your thoughts are about, you know, when if this was you in this situation, would you be open and willing to take care of both of the babies together co-parenting? For example, some of the smaller but harder things to really consider. You have your baby um, for the weekend. Does that mean the uh, twin needs to come for that weekend as well? You buy your baby a uh, buck of clothes. Does that mean you buy the uh, twin a buck of clothes? These are these are real things that, you know, got to be considered. So y'all let me know what you think down in the comments about that. All right, and Zach did end up calling Karen about it. And Karen just pretty much, of course, her first assumption was thinking that Fatima or, or Danny put him up to you know, that saying that he want to, you know, take her his half of the baby. But she, you know, quickly said that her babies are not going to be raised separately. And then Aaron back at the shop here with Karen, Pam and Aaron, uh, Aaron shows up. He don't ne he never calls. He just pops up. So now y'all know he's going to be a little more, even more extra just popping up unwanted right so and that's what Cameron told him you have to start calling before you just pop up but during this conversation you know Cameron learned that he is an investor uh for Pam's uh business and seems as though Cameron didn't like that well she was surprised do y'all think she may get a little jealous that Karen I mean that Aaron is investing in Pam's business Okay, Karen, I make up your mind. And then a little later on, Trey pops up, you know, at the at the shop. He wanted somebody to see his drip. And he invited Karen out for dinner. But Karen doesn't seem to be confident in herself and being pregnant, right? Um, she can't really believe, she doesn't believe that a man would want, would like her in this state. And that's not true. You know, there are some men out there can see past that. And I think, you know, Trey may be genuinely wanting to date Karen, but she just, you know, shot him, you know, shot him down and declined the offer. So he just kept it moving. He was going to, you know, do his th thug thizzle anyway. <laughs> All right, and then one of the last uh, highlights for me in this episode was Zach and Aaron. So, of course, Pam, not Pam, Karen told Aaron what Zach wanted to do. So, Aaron, you know, tracked down Zach at the basketball court. They, you know, had words back and forth, and they actually learned some things about each other. Zach was able to learn that Aaron's kids were in their grandmother's custody, and they don't and they've been convinced not to have any dealings with Aaron. So having this baby with Karen is like a second chance for him. Zach, on the other hand, you know, he was real empathetic to that that situation. But also Zach, Aaron made him realize the choice words that you use can sometimes, you know, be misleading, offensive. These are not his words, but I'm just summarizing from what I gathered from it. So, you know, word choice matters. But through this conversation, I think Zach was able to realize that 
they are going to have to work together, you know, in taking care of the babies. So Fatima was right. And then we have Danny and Tony. So, of course, you know, Danny and Sabrina was over there because Danny could not hold it to herself. The news about two di- two different baby daddies, right? So she played a game of charades with Sabrina to get Sabrina to guess what the T was so that it wouldn't appear that Danny actually told her. Duh, Danny. So they played that little game. I thought that was cute. But while Sabrina was there, Tony shows up. Okay, and Sabrina left. Tony came over there, defenses up, ready to attack Danny because his daughter came home with the handcuffs that she asked Danny about. So he, you know, there were a lot of words exchanged, but what stood out to me was that he called Danny irresponsible. And if you were going to do a favor, do the favor. And Danny, you know, was saying that she did, you know, she was responsible. But at the same time, you know, your daughter, your little bad daughter was going through my things. What did you want me to do? You know, again, in my previ- my video that I've already posted, I shared that these kids are not comfortable with her. She, she's not comfortable with them. So, of course, Danny wanted to keep things, you know, cool and not click out on, on the kids. So I thought, in my opinion, Tony was dead wrong. You know, he was out of line for attacking her because Danny could have been Danny and she could have clicked on the little kids and um that would have been that and then it would have been a different story at that point so tony out of line what do y'all think was he out of line or did he did he was he right to attack danny now she did him a favor all right cuties those are the highlights for me in this particular episode y'all like up the video hit subscribe and look y'all have a good day on purpose bye